So you think this car is special because it's a Ferrari, right? Wrong. You think this car is special because it has almost 600 horsepower, right? Wrong. No, this car is special because it is one of the first four Ferraris in the US that is fitted with Apple CarPlay. So today, instead of taking this almost 600 horsepower car and screaming around canyons in Malibu, what we're gonna do is find our lightning cable here, connect it to our iPhone 6. Basically, this is the only way it works. It doesn't work via Bluetooth. And then go down into the belly of the beast and see how this system works in Los Angeles. So let's try this in the real world. And I really don't think it gets much more real than sitting in LA traffic. And yes, we're driving the Ferrari, but these are the realities of life. Um, first thing we need is an internet connection. Basically the way Siri works, all the voice recognition stuff, that all requires an internet connection. So I'm going to preface this film by saying, I am not, and this is not a commercial, I am not on Verizon or AT&T. Sadly, I am on Sprint not the best coverage, so sometimes she does not work and it's a huge thing to do with Sprint. Anyway, um, we are in the middle of Los Angeles, so hopefully the coverage is good. Uh, now I want to point out a couple of things. There's, think of it as two environments. You've got the Ferrari environment, or in the case of other car manufacturers, whatever the OEM environment is, but this example is going to be Ferrari. And then you've got the Apple environment. So this is the UX that Ferrari has, dis has designed, and this is the main menu here. And I can access anything I want, you know, the radio, the media, navigation. Um, and this car actually has two USB ports, one that can power and interact with anything, and one that is solely dedicated to CarPlay. You with me so far? Uh, then you have the hard buttons on the side here, and there is one hard button that is totally for Apple CarPlay. I gotta say, this is a really nice touch because I don't think this would be as usable if you got nothing but soft buttons here. Um, and this one is, is relatively simply laid out because you only have a couple of buttons on either side, which, you know, I really don't think of Italians as good ergonomics, but if you look at the layout here, if I may digress on Ferraris, it's a pretty nice little layout they've got set up here. Anyway, so if I wanna switch to Apple CarPlay, I just hit this button. And then you have your typical iOS screen. Granted, this one is rendered for a 16 by nine uh, screen, so it's optimized. So what they've done is they've taken the smart button, the uh, status indicator, which we're getting actually LTE, but two bars, uh, and the time, and it's justified left. And then you have all of the different iOS uh, icons, all the app icons. Now, this is where we gotta cover something really important. You don't get every app on your phone in CarPlay. You only get the apps that are relevant to driving or relevant to cars. So the native apps on iOS you get is phone, music, Apple Maps, messaging, and podcasts. Then there are third-party apps. So uh, it's currently iHeartRadio, CBS, MLB, Stitcher, and a couple of others that are focused, again, on um, audio. Now, if you notice, there's one more app here, and that's the California T app. And this is how Ferrari has chosen, let's get around some of this traffic here, because let me tell you, friends, even in Ferraris, you have to sit in traffic. Um, anyway, so this app here, this is how Ferrari has chosen to integrate their UI into uh, CarPlay, where if you looked at the Hyundai film we did with uh, the Sonata, back in Alabama. Now granted, that was a, re that was a very early pre-production unit, I mean, actually pre-pre-production unit. We couldn't drive that car. Uh, the Hyundai guy was the one doing all the driving, uh, but it still worked very well. But that has a soft button that gets that toggles between CarPlay and the Hyundai UI. Here, I really loved that they, that they decided to put this California T app. Now granted, if you have a Ferrari FF or a Ferrari F12, granted, you know, don't cry for me, Argentina, one of those Ferraris changes this app, but you still get the Prancing Horse logo. Nice touch. So if I hit that app, notice I go right back to the Ferrari uh, user experience here. Now, once again, I want to go back to Apple. I just go back to Apple. Oh, and by the way, if you have an old school iPhone 5 that doesn't have uh, the finger, uh, fingerprint uh, recognition, you have to unlock your phone before you connect this thing in. And once you unlock it, 
then it stays on lock once it's connected to your car. Now, one other thing we gotta look at here, notice you got the arrows and the dots. So I actually do have Stitcher on my phone, some more of the apps that you would see. So I've got iHeart and I've got uh, Stitcher here. So it, it, it literally just kind of cascades over into other pages and you get the normal UI with the dots down here. Anyway, I wanna focus on a couple of points here. There's two major omissions that I feel are here, or not here. Uh, number one, Apple Maps. So let's be honest, Apple Maps is very much in its infancy stages. Um, and right now, this is a walled garden, basically, for Apple. I can totally appreciate that they've got their walled garden and they want to kind of promote their solution here. But the reality is Google Maps is the gold standard. And if, if you really want to prove this thing out, I would say a rising tide raises all ships here. And you really want this to be as great of a user experience as possible. So I would say, let's definitely get Google Maps on here, even though it doesn't fit totally in the Apple uh, ecosystem. Anyway, uh, the other major omission here is, notice you don't have mail. Uh, you do have messaging, but think about situations when, actually this is a great example. I am sitting on the, the 10 to, excuse me, the 405 to the 10 interchange, and let's just say I'm going to be late for my meeting, but I don't have the person's mobile phone number. I mean, how many times has that situation happened? You can't text them. You would love to be able to email them, but you don't want to, if you're already in this environment, you don't want to pull your phone out. So ideally having mail in here just to send a quick email, hey, you know, Derek, I'm going to be late. Can you start the design review without me? And just the thing goes off. You're not going to go and have like, do red lines on a Word document with lawyers with this app. Just things like that where you don't have access to somebody's mobile number. Um, so those are the two omissions. And I feel this is an important point of our discussion to talk about safety, and that's obviously text messaging. I mean, think about it. When you're driving down the road, whether it's in traffic or even just like this when now there's no traffic, most people are on their phone texting. This completely takes that problem away. Um, and let's see how it works. So let's go to messaging. Who would you like to text? Derek Jenkins. Okay, what do you want to say to Derek Jenkins? Hey Derek, I'm driving the Ferrari with Your car. message to Derek Jenkins says. It's not perfect. Hey Derek, ready to send it? Change. I'm happy to do that. What would you like it to say? Hey Derek, I'm driving the Ferrari with CarPlay. I updated your message. It says, Hey Derek, I'm driving the Ferrari with CarPlay. Ready to send it? Send. Done. And then once you're done with that, you can wait for a response. And notice it goes back to your main menu of texting. And when you're, your text menu, a couple things about this. Yeah, it does have the chronological order, so the most recent is at the top. But notice it's not one continuous scroll. Basically, it only has the most, I think, what is it, most 10 most recent text conversations. Uh, so if you wanted to start a new text conversation, you just hit this button here, and the thing asks Who would you like to text? So we go back here. Now, hopefully, someone will respond to us while I'm talking to you guys. You have a message from James Christopher Wolak. Hey, what's up? Nice car. Okay. Would you like to reply? Reply. Okay, what do you want to say to James Christopher Wolak? Thank you for the very nice compliment. Your message to James Christopher Wolak says, Thank you for the very nice compliment. Ready to send it? Change. I'm happy to do that. What would you like it to say? I'm driving a Ferrari, bitch. Let's see if she gets that. She can curse, actually. I've tested it. She totally can curse. I don't know if the cell coverage is going to screw us on this one, but she can definitely curse. I'm really sorry about this, but I can't take any requests right now. 
Please try again in a little while. Okay, trust me on this one. She totally can curse. Um, and that really isn't that bad of a curse now, is it? Um, but anyway, you can see how the functionality would work if we had better cell coverage. Uh, anyway, while we don't have cell coverage, let me show you another app that's not dependent on cell coverage. So music, obviously you can go into your music player and you can see, I don't even know if I have anything on this. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys are a fan of Aloe Black. He's a fantastic guy. Uh, and then it's got the iTunes stuff in here, so whatever your song, artist, that kind of stuff. Same menu structure again. So we've said this a couple of times. I don't care if you're in phone, um, podcasts, or in music, the menu structure is the same. The only time the menu structures change is when you should be focusing on the road and not scrolling through long lists like in address book or text messaging. Uh, so now, Think about the instance where do I always want to listen to podcasts or music on my iPhone? Well, Ferrari and Hyundai, I'll give them to their credit, they've given you that option. You can toggle, like the navigation, you can toggle between the different systems. So once again, let's go back to the Ferrari system, let's go back to their main menu, and then I can use the radio, I can use Let's say if I have a, let's say your girlfriend, she's got an Android device. Um, you know, you can hit media and plug in her her uh, Android device. Uh, now, this I don't want to, I don't want to clear anything here. Um, I'm a fan of uh, 53 on satellite radio. Chill. Anyway, uh, you can switch between FM, AM, and you're going to see this on all of the integrations with most of the car manufacturers. Let's move on to the other app, and that's really the phone. And this, there isn't a lot new here. Same system. Who yeah. shall I help you call? Eugene O'Hara. Calling Eugene O'Hara. So, you know, we don't have the whole conversation with him, but you can see it works very similar to your iPhone. And notice, once again, it gives me the same menu structure, so this is exactly from your iOS device, but now it's showing me things that are relevant, like recent uh, calls. Now, if you look at most OEMs, they'll show you recent calls in a menu but they won't let you dial. Same deal here. Uh, like you go over to contacts, it won't let me scroll through contacts. So in this case, I'd have to use the, the voice activated stuff. Uh, there is a keypad so you can enter in phone numbers and then you obviously go regular to your voicemail. And then if you wanted favorites, you can have favorites. Although I don't like anybody, so I have any favorites. Uh, let's go back here. And then you've got podcasts. And same deal here with podcasts. The menu structure is the same. You can see a bit more because the logic is, if we go into a podcast, I don't know if you guys uh, like any of these. Anyway, um, uh, you can go into like a podcast here, like let's see Gary, my boy Gary V. He's a good man, a uh, very motivating uh, individual. Uh, so you can literally pick between these two. And again, it shows you something where there isn't a hell of a lot of interaction. So it's limiting you sitting there scrolling down, looking at stuff like text messaging or looking through your phone book. Okay, let's try another test with a different app, but let's make it far more difficult with the roof down. Um, navigation. And we're going to use the Apple Maps rather than the Ferrari Maps. So we're gonna take the car back to Ferrari service, sadly. I gotta turn this thing in. Um, let's see how it goes. So we got the home button, so that's how we get Siri to go. Let's get her there. Navigate to 2036 South Westgate, Los Angeles, California. Let's see if it does not see if she works. She's trying. I heard the beep. You heard it too. We may get there before she finds the actual place to go. I'm really sorry about this, but I can't take any requests right now. Okay. Please try again in a little while. Once again, we got a problem with the cell coverage. This is not uh, Siri. As much as I'd like to blame Siri here, this is not Siri doing this. 
Uh, we're in Santa Monica. Sprint's coverage is horrific. Uh, I am going to be switching off of Sprint very soon. I've called them many times and they don't want to fix this, but uh, it's just, it doesn't work in Santa Monica and many other places. But let's try again. Navigate to 2036 South Westgate, Los Angeles, California. Let's see if Getting she directions to 2036 Southwest Gate Avenue, Los Angeles. Wow, it worked! It gives me the route, it shows me some traffic. I mean, that's the usual stuff that you'd get from... Starting route with 2036 Southwest wow. Gate Avenue. It In 1.8 miles, take exit 2 towards Sentinella Avenue. How do you like them apples? And I got to argue that as much as I poo-poo Apple Maps against Google, those maps are better than the map you would see on the Ferrari side. So let's say if I go back to CarPlay and uh, let's go back to the main menu on Ferrari. But look at these maps. I mean, that's horrible compared to this. And oh, it shows you the status up on the left. Check that out. And now it goes back to uh, maps. Look at that. 1.3 miles in traffic. Now think about what we just did here. We got Siri to work with the roof down on the freeway. Granted, we're sitting in traffic, so it's not as loud as it normally would be. But wow, it actually worked. People, this is going to change your life. It's going to change my life. We're in a Ferrari with Apple CarPlay. If this isn't the future, I don't know what is. Well, no traffic. That would be the future. Turn left, then the destination is on your left. So as we get to our destination, I notice that there's a car coming out. Let's pause here. And notice you can't pinch to zoom the map at all. You have to use the plus and minus here, which this is more a limitation of the uh, screen the hardware in the car rather than the software itself. My guess is this will change over time. It depends on what manufacturer supports that functionality. But the, the plus and minus, arrived. I think that would need to change. Thank you for telling me we have arrived. And we definitely have arrived. Look, we've got an FF. We've got a 458, 458 convertible. you got, oh, an F12. I love that one. A 512TR, eh, a couple Maseratis another ff we'll have to get that one that's that's a press car and then we got another california in there i gotta tell you i don't know what's worse giving this car up or giving up carplay in summary what do we got well we've got three car manufacturers that are doing the initial rollout mercedes volvo and of course ferrari but from there, and I can't believe I'm saying this about an Apple product, it's a bit of an open canvas. Like, look at how Ferrari has integrated CarPlay into their UX. They decided to integrate into CarPlay by doing the very elegant solution of the Ferrari app within iOS. Where Hyundai, if you saw our film on that one, it's within the Hyundai UX. And then BMW, they're gonna do it with their iDrive controller, and Volvo renders the screen completely differently. So it's gonna be really fun to sit back and watch and see how all this integration cascades through different car manufacturers. But at the end of the day, it's really gonna come down to the same thing that made the smartphone ecosystem popular in the first place, and that's the apps. We showed you a couple today, and you know, I'm a plane geek if you know me, so I'd love to have my airline app on it. So when I'm driving to the airport, I can see if my flight's on time and see it on the map. I think that would be pretty awesome. But what would you want? What would you want to see in a future version of CarPlay? What apps should be in there? Let me know in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV, all one word, Moto Man TV, all one word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And until I see the next car with CarPlay, stay hungry and stay foolish. So here's the script. Click here to subscribe. Click here to watch one of our 350 other episodes. And most importantly, share us with your friends. You're only wasting half your life on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Moto Man TV, all one word. I don't care who you share us with. Share us with your enemies. Just give the gift of Moto Man.